So hi everyone, welcome to the Track B um, final presentations. We are just getting everyone admitted into our Zoom room, so we should be starting shortly. Uh, this is hashtag double well night to keep you preserving one by cultural jam. Next slide, please. Uh, the Mumbo Double Wells are a world famous lunchbox delivery service. 5,000 Double Wells deliver 200,000 tiffins one on time every day with a six sigma accuracy. Uh, they deliver hot lunches from home to offices in the back, point to point with really simple systems. Uh, as many are illiterate. Uh, this is a 130 year old service with invaluable cultural significance that you can see by the images below. Next slide, please. Uh, this is our approach, this is our process and approach we spoke to Double Wells and emphasize the situation, uh, emphasize the situation that they convey that the donors want to receive charity. They want to earn their livelihood. This became a factor in dividing our solution. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, co uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID and antioxidants mean there's no work for them. And because of their informal organization, CSL programs and government aid do not reach the double wallet. Uh, they are left with insufficient Priti, is this just us, or we're not able to hear anything? Yes, sorry, we are still just waiting for everyone to join the Zoom. It's taking uh, okay. longer <laughs> for everyone to onboard into the same room, but very shortly uh, we will start sharing our screen and moving forward. I, it felt like somebody was presenting something. I heard something. Yes, I think someone had from... accidentally gone off mute and was practicing. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought maybe it's just my. But thank you for your patience while we no do problem. Zoom.
If you just joined us, we are just waiting for everyone to be able to onboard themselves onto the Zoom and presentation should be starting shortly. Hey, Kriti, I'm on. Sorry. Hey, Kriti, you're on the mic. Perfect. I sure you should be able to share your screen now. Sounds good. Purushottam, do you have the backup set up? Or Sumitra? Yes, sir. Yes, I sure I have. Okay, thank you. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes. <laughs> Okay, we'll give everyone about maybe two more minutes to onboard, but otherwise we'll just get started and hope that they join somewhere during the introduction. <laughs> okay, we could always start with the first presentation, right? Yes, we do have some introductory slides. Um, we'll just give everyone one more minute since it seems like we have maybe less than half of the people who should be on right now. That's okay, anyway, it's, it's almost uh, half an hour past the time, so it should be fine. All right, then we will get started um, and hopefully our team members for our first few pitches are here. Um, so welcome everyone to the final pitches for track B for the MIT COVID-19 challenge, India Turning the Tide. Um, I just want to say to all of the teams who worked this weekend, congratulations, we have seen where you started 
and what your pitches have now become, um, what you're about to present. And as track leads, um, myself, Aishwarya, Purushottam, and Sumitra are incredibly proud of the work that you have put in this weekend. And we're very excited for the judges to be able to see that as well. Next slide. Next slide. So hopefully you are in the right track if you're a participant. This is track B. If you're not in track B, please check um, for your final presentation link. Next. Next. So of course we want to thank all of our partners and sponsors who've made this event possible throughout the weekend. So both providing mentorship, resources, and just a wealth of knowledge for all of you as you've been working through your projects. Next. Just very quickly, so what has happened over the past 48 hours is that teams have really come together after pitching problems that they saw in the space of delivering education during the time of COVID-19. And really since Saturday morning, they've been working on hacking through these ideas, getting feedback from our amazing group of mentors, and then iterating as they've been presenting their ideas to us. And today you will see the results of that in our final presentation. Next. So all of the participants are aware of the judging criteria. Next. Um, but you will be evaluated on impact, innovation, implementation, and of course, your presentation. Next. So the logistics, these presentations are being recorded. Um, you will have exactly three minutes to present. We will cut you off in the interest of time and keeping this moving so that we are not keeping everyone, especially our judges here longer than they need to be. Um, and then you will have exactly two minutes to answer questions from our judges. Um, any of your, the team members who are part of the team can answer questions from our judges. Um, when it's time for your team to present, please raise your hand um, in the participant section and we will unmute you so that you can present. We will be clicking through your slides for you and just give us maybe a second or two in case there's some lag between when we hit next and when you're actually seeing next on your slide. And so now I would like our wonderful panel of judges to just take a minute and unmute themselves and just introduce themselves to you. Hello everyone, I guess we'll go in order. My name is Archan Basu, uh, so namaste to everyone from Boston. I am here representing the MIT South Asian Alumni Association. Uh, I work in financial services at uh, most recently Fidelity uh, and have also served as a, uh, an entrepreneur in financial services and in FinTech. Uh, super excited to be here and to hear everything that uh, you guys have been working on for the last 48 hours. Hope you guys get some sleep after this. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Chandan. I lead uh, the sales for the dining business at Zomato. Uh, There's one advice from me for all of you. Uh, give it your best. Uh, you, have, you have been working uh, tirelessly for, for two days now. Uh, so give it your best and uh, all the best to everyone. Hi, I'm Nitin Deshmukh. I work with Kotak Investment Advisors, which is the alternate asset arm of Kotak uh, Group. Uh, uh, we are one of the large investors in healthcare and uh, life sciences in the country. That's where I lead. Uh, look forward to the presentations. Hi, I'm Srishti Jain. I'm the co-founder of a uh, not-for-profit organization called Zomato Feeding India. We're one of the largest not-for-profits in the country working to solve hunger and food waste. Um, I hope, you know, best of luck to everyone. And I'm sure you've worked really, really hard. Uh, really excited to know what you guys have prepared. Yeah. Good. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. Vivek Sharma. I'm a partner with Fraser Ventures. I've been CEO of multiple companies based out of Boston and focused on healthcare life sciences companies. Look forward to working and hearing your stories. All the best. Thank you so much, judges. So we are now about to get started with our first presentation. Just judges so that you know between each presentation, we'll give you about 20 to 30 seconds so that you have time to fill in your forms and appropriately put in whatever comments you want. And if you do need more time than that, just let me know and we'll pause. 
Fantastic. So our first team up today is team B041, quarantined classroom. And coming up on deck is team 012, learning by doing. So if you are on the quarantined classroom team, feel free to unmute yourself. And let us know when you're here so we can move through your slides for you. Team 041, are your team members here and unmuted? On the chat, they are saying they're yes, yes, and um, we are here. Can you unmute yourself? Unmute, yeah. They think they cannot unmute themselves. So. Let's see. How about now? You Hello. Should be, Hello. Okay. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys are you guys ready? Yes. Should I start? Yes, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. We are quarantine classrooms, and we are addressing the issue of delivering quality education to rural areas of India. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So after research, we found out that 67% of the Indian population lives in rural areas, out of which 146 million are elementary school students residing in rural areas. Next. So up above 14 years, children are not covered the cost of free to education under the Right to Education Act, which adds to the financial constraints. Thanks to COVID-19, this has added to the current problem. And as seen, they generally they are located in the higher population areas of the village or talukas. So transportation is also a problem. Next slide, please. So we've planned to leverage the current 289 community radio stations and providing them vocational training content to nearby villages and students. We are targeting the 9 out of the 19 CRS target to the rural audience. Next. So what do we want to offer is, next slide please. The, our objective is to cover, um, next, 13 to 18 years of students age group participating and increasing the student participation for st studying, standardize the cost in line with the new education policy of 2020 and in partnering with telecommunications in education. Next, we plan to deliver the content by radio. Why? As per the research, we have found out that radio is the most prevalent form of communication in rural areas because uh, connectivity is comparatively a problem. And we plan to provide English and local languages thanks to NEP in 2020, where there's demand for language classes now. So there will be lead, uh, learning communities through radio that can be communicated and students can send their voice messages via uh, the, the, their doubts via voice messages and awareness related to COVID-19 can also be present through radio. Next slide, please. Next point is our mobile library where our NGOs and volunteers can provide books and supplies and collect assignments from students to be, be communicated. And we have already in talks with two NGOs, Ekpahel and Roshan Bharat. Next. So we plan to leverage the 43% of listeners who will stay in below the poverty line, out of which 40% are secondary and higher secondary graduates. Next. This is our flowchart and mechanism. So teachers and educators who will be creating content and communicating through radio, NGO and volunteers who will be functioning the mobile library and can also give out secondhand devices in case needed. 
and we are going to partner with local stores and uh, so that they can reward and gamify the whole learning process where they can provide dry ration kits like rice and potato etc and local stores also get to advertise their products thank in you store. so much that was three minutes thank you so now judges um you have Aisha, how will you standardize the content because um, in a same area same age group the the, the needs might be different Anybody from my team wants to take it up, and then I'll go. Yes, sir. So we will be standardizing the 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 content. Like, yes, we will be making the vocational courses that is useful to that particular area people. We will be conducting certain research for that area people. What they what kind of um area is there? What kind of things they want? We will be conducting a basic research out of it, and then we will be planning out what um how are we going with the education part of it. and we will be hiring the local teachers itself that they can um communicate these um skills and the vocational courses in the native language only question 2 um vivek do you want to go ahead do you have another question no i don't okay. all right so radio communication is more one way right like you just imparting you just giving all the lessons or you giving the communication to the students how and because these might be first generation learners these might be people who are studying for the first time have been out of touch because schools have been shut since a long time how do you plan to solve their doubts clear their need clear you know do all of that that a normal classroom does it 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 would be like this that on the so, weekly basis when yeah priyanshu go ahead yeah so our plan was to uh, so if you have you know uh, listen to radio programs what they allow is to uh, they allow uh, uh, audience to call them voice call which is like uh, everyone might must be having like mobile numbers so they can call the radio stations which will get them in touch with educators and uh, like you know teachers to clear their doubts it will be planned like a weekly or a, like you know the classes will be preplanned and at that time educators will be able to connect with the students and our mobile library will also serve as a means to act as a communication base for students and teachers we will have a volunteer who would be going every month to collect surveys or things that they have other than the radio links that we'll be doing each each week thank you thank so much you. that was 2 minutes thank you ma'am so we will let the judges um take a few seconds to update their score sheets and input any comments during that time if this team could mute themselves again team b12 learning by doing please unmute yourselves you should be able to do so now and team b25 please note that you will be next on deck judges please let me know whenever you're ready to continue and we'll have the next team start I am I'm ready Yep ready Yes I'm done as well in b012 are you guys ready yes we are perfect then it seems like you can get started um and i'll start the timer whenever you begin okay so am i clear and audible yes yep ladies and gentlemen introducing project saksham learning by doing by team b012 next slide please introducing the problem there is this typical example where rural kids yearn to learn so much but how much does textbooks impart this in them well in the pre covid scene understanding was far beyond and now in the covid scenario access to resources have also been lost next slide please now what are we to do to answer this we have brought about the idea of blended project based learning where learning would be fun project 
and guidance oriented and engages all our stakeholders where elementary school kids content and delivery as well. Can we move to the next slide, please? And now let's take a look at our unique practical solution. First, we tend to develop a pedagogy focusing on practical approach, and then we train and enable enablers to develop themselves following with which they bridge the gap and engage the whole family to understand and we make it work. Beyond the pandemic as well. Next slide, please. Following this, we have the popular data that shows us that they learn the best when they enjoy it. And here are a few examples on my right where kids enjoy and learning is really made fun. Next slide, please. Now moving on to the implementation and taking a look at it, we have planning and pilot phase lined up right now. Under planning, we develop a pedagogy using project-based learning. Later where we adopt a village and pilot the plan, we collaborate, we interact, train and work along with them for the whole of the academic year and we make it work. A solution beyond the pandemic. Next slide, please. And this is all about Saksham. Simple activity-based knowledge along with science and hands-on training with analytic and mindful approach. To teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. Next slide, please. And this is our diverse team of different ages, in different sectors, consisting of a teacher, researcher, gestion consultant, management professional, engineers, and students. And a real big and special thanks to our mentors for the whole of the effort. Thank you for the effort and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Okay, so this will need working with the government um, and the you know public school systems. I mean, you know, have you guys given some thought to it? Because the implementation of this needs a lot of policy changes and you know some some of those uh, challenges. Any thoughts on that? Yes. Yeah, so we are not a replacement to the current existing system. So we are trying to make the practicals accessible and easy for them to understand. So it's just an add-on uh, uh, thing, and yeah, uh, we are taking COVID-19 as an you know, opportunity to start this, and the solution goes beyond that. Thank How you. are you solving the connectivity problem? Yes, yeah, so we are uh, we are trying to leverage the you know, NGO, the Anganwari workers, and the other social workers uh, network uh, to solve this. So we are going to train these Anganwari workers and other social workers, and they are further going to you know uh, distribute the resources, the pamphlets, and the DIY kits to the villages. And we have talked to our mentors, and they say these networks are quite strong and they can be leveraged. To answer that question as well, things that can be done online will be done online, and things that has to be taken offline will be taken offline. Thank you. We did focus a lot on the offline part because there is a lot of connectivity issues in terms of uh, data. Uh, so that would be also a big uh, thrust, but definitely we have the opportunity to use also technology when we can. Uh, the focus is on offline where this is to reach the furthest villages, the furthest people. What are the economics of this? Are these free of cost? Uh, will parents pay for this? So uh, we are, we definitely don't want to pass on any costs to the parents because definitely the challenge is to motivate them to bring the student to school. So it's not a cost which should uh, inhibit them. This is one of the pain problems for them anyway. Uh, that the kids are taken off into work in the field rather than schools. So we don't want to charge them. Definitely we will have to tap the government funding because there is ample funding available and we will have, we also will use say corporate, uh, corporate social responsibility, CSR funds, and of course, uh, tap NGOs for uh, funding on this. And of course, we have self-help groups and volunteer network, which will make it uh, Thank you, you know, so much, much more. Effective. That was two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, team 12. So team 25, you are up. While the judges are finishing their scores, please unmute yourselves and prepare for your presentation. Team 39, COVID, you are on deck.
Judges, whenever you're ready, we can move. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. Good to go. Perfect. Team 25, um, whenever you begin, I will start the timer. Uh, good evening to one and all present here. This is uh, Team 25, each one, each one initiative. So as we are all aware, children of migrant workers, street vendors, auto, taxi drivers, and small shop owners who form a major part of the population in government schools, in semi-urban areas, do not benefit from online classes. A, they don't have the resources required to access the classes. B, the teaching methodology in general in most of the government schools relies on teacher talk, chalk talk, and rote learning, which does not encourage learning. So slide two, please, slide one, uh, slide two and slide three. Please move on, thank you. So what's our solution? The students of private schools, as a general rule, two grades up, teach a group of five students of a government school in the same area, two grades down. They are mentored by an adult of the same community. The model is applicable to all grades. They will have to undergo a selection process to participate in this program. Next slide, please. So, how does it work? Teachers and adults interested in this endeavor in the local community are roped in through advertisements and word of mouth. They in turn create awareness among students and children. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, data about volunteers is uploaded on an app and volunteers choose the school they would partner with usually within the local community. Point of contact for each school in the community is identified and he or she acts as the interface between the school and the volunteer workforce. Next slide. The curriculum and content is not meddled with. However, the methodology is redesigned. We shift focus from teacher-centric to learner-centric, project-based learning, learning through discovery, stories, comics, board games, guided group discussions, etc. Life skill sessions and vocational training sessions will be included on a weekly basis. Mobile libraries and stationary banks to aid learning and resource pooling. Children will take up assessments with us on a monthly basis and will also go through exams in their own schools. Next slide. What do we do post COVID? A few initiatives will continue on a school to school or a case to case basis. Buddy programs to help in homework, library, and uh, the resource bank would go on. Probably the same sessions would be staggered weekly or fortnightly. Next slide. How do we garner the resources required? So this is a non-profit initiative. So initially, we require to advertise and get adults and teachers on board, so crowdfunding. Rummage sale for books and stationery, and to appreciate students who uh, take part in this effort, adults who take part in this effort, we need donations to give them trophies. Thank you so and much. Price. That was three minutes. Thank you. That's about. Mary, the private students actually have so much homework these days, right? And extracurricular activities and all these things. You know, this will. Will they get credit for this uh, mentor mentee work that they will be doing in their current schools? Right. So uh, we are initiating this program through the teachers of private schools. Okay. So they will have to uh, incorporate this as part of their school curriculum and the school projects. Having said that they have a lot of homework and a lot of extracurricular activities, their curriculum is very flexible and adaptable. So this could be made part of their, you know, the credits for the course or something like that, wherein students can be graded on this also. Thank you. Problem that we started was, uh, you know, the penetration of technology is not there. While this is one-to-one -one reach, while technology can actually help reach one-to-many, how would we address this problem in a one-to-one -one problem? The Technology can reach many, but the many cannot reach technology is our main problem here. You know, uh, we can address even 100 or 1,000 students through an online forum. But how many of the students in turn get to talk is, is not at all evaluated, it's not assessed, and the results are not satisfactory in case it's addressed also. So on a one-to-one -one basis, 
we can use probably uh, some part of technology like PowerPoint presentations or you know uh, some applications to teach children, but that cannot be the solution to give them an entire curriculum in an online form. Um, so there are uh, other organizations and NGOs that also work in a similar space where they match students uh, with volunteers. How is this different? Okay, how is this different is A, the teaching methodology. B, we are partnering, we are not leaving out the teachers of the government, of the respective government schools. Because post-COVID, all these students would go back to their schools. They're going to pick up their bags, they're going to go back. So you cannot eliminate the teachers who form an integral part of that particular school. We are taking them in. We are not meddling with the curriculum. So it is a partnership between private school, public school, and the teachers of those government schools. Thank you so and much. For few minutes. Thank you all so much. Thank you. So team 39 COVID, while the judges are finishing up their forms, please unmute yourselves and prepare for your presentation. Team B19, re-educate, you are up on deck. Judges, are we okay to proceed? Yes, I'm done. Yep, great. So team 39, please take it away and I'll start the timer whenever you begin. Yeah, um, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. It, we realize now it's so important to actually hear another person because we can't see them. And the last few days, some of us managed to make some friends, but all my friends are across a black screen. So I basically have black mirrors for friends. And that's what made us realize in our team, what is the life like of those people who live their lives with black mirrors? And that's when we arrived at looking at visually impaired children in the country. Next slide. 75% of children with disabilities in India are in rural areas and they are not able to attend schools. And as you would expect, there are 20 lakh children, the most out of that, that are blind in India. And 60% of them, are which, uh, they cannot attend school or even understand what an online class is or how to, uh, how to comprehend that information. They do not have enough study material and government institutions and policies pay little attention during humanitarian relief actions, as is the usual case. Next slide. Having such a problem in, the, in 2020 is abysmal. But there are many people out there who are actually creating content that is accessible or like that that can be used for by visually challenged people except a lot of india is not connected to it most of india is, has smartphones it does not it does not have access to it an entire family has just one phone and most of them use feature phones and that's where we thought agya can come in next slide please agya is a platform where we compile and curate content and distribute it over phone calls over ivrs where people ask for what they want and they listen to a class. Next slide, please. There is a child, a blind child. Ideally, the parent would, be, would want them to learn, say, a new science concept today. They would dial in the number, ask for what science concept they want. We'll pick from the content we collated from existing content out there and provide it to them. We'll then take some feedback from the child if they actually understood it or not. Next slide, please. The idea of Agya can scale up where it starts with being a distributing channel, where it distributes existing content and alleviates the information asymmetry between urban areas and rural and semi-urban areas and move on to have phone buddy systems where blind children can be connected to other blind children who they can make friends with and then slowly send physical learning materials and finally curate content, which our expertise within the team is where we develop play-based physical material and audible courses based on all the feedback that we collected. The idea is to have a more inclusive content platform for children with all disabilities. Next. 
the idea is to charge the parents to pay as much as they can. Usually the parents of blind children are actually more empathetic than the rest of us. And actively associate with a lot of partners in the government and the private industry to keep this going. Last slide, please. The impact of this particular Agya product is supposed to be where a blind child is integrating seamlessly into society and we build a more inclusive and empathetic educational platform. Uh, I'd like to now introduce you to the team, which is the next slide. And we can take any of your questions. Sahiti, will you be creating new content or you just existing content you will convert into a voice based system? How will this really work? We will convert existing content into voice based uh, systems. So okay. I'll add to that, in urban surroundings, we have in urban schools, special educators, very refined content for disabled learning, but that has not been able to penetrate through in the rural environment. So when we talk about our stakeholders will be providing our, or who will be working with us for the content, it would be open schools, NGOs, special educators, even in our later phases, we expect to see if somehow we can convert the educational comp, uh, class platforms like Akash and other platforms to bring their coaching to rural students who are disabled. Thank you. How would this be different than the other current, uh, currently other, uh, you know, similar projects that are worked in in this space? Uh, they're actually the IVR or distributing over phone call would be the difference. Currently, everyone who's creating content does not have the access to reach someone in a rural or semi-urban setting because they are only in the city that they're based in. Who pays for it? So, so in our uh, model that we right now plan to propose was uh, so we believe in the fact that, uh, you know, whatever comes free is probably not valued. So we create an income based uh, platform for different levels of the economy for whatever is sufficient for them so that they feel they've enrolled into something. But to fund further projects, we are looking into government partnerships as well as CSRs from different companies. Thank you so much. That was two minutes. Hi, could you also share your team number? Sorry, I missed that. Zero three nine. Sorry? Thirty nine zero three nine. So team zero one nine re educate while the judges are finishing their scores for team zero three nine. Um, please unmute yourselves and team twenty eight, you are on deck. Multiple. You are audible. Judges, whenever you're ready, let me know and we will proceed. Yeah. Ready. Shall we start? Yes, please. Respected judges, dignitaries, and fellow students, good evening, fellow Indians, and good, mo uh, good morning, rest all. Today, I will be pitching the problem on behalf of Team 19. So here's presenting our idea of re-educate, Padai Ka Desi Jugaad. India has around 295 rural districts out of total of 402 administrative districts where most of the people don't have access to quality education during various, due to various reasons. Next slide. 
our problem revolves around the inadequate internet access and unreliable sources of electricity. It also involves the lack of digital platforms and costly devices for the same, especially during pandemic at it, as it is very much needed. Next slide. Rural people. Some of the some of the statistics show how rural areas have increased in digital audience to around 10 million from 2016 to 2018. So we thus plan to have a digital access to study material in cost effective and convenient manner in order to impart education for all parts of the society. Next slide. Rural people love CRT TVs. So what immediate solution we can have? Without internet, TV is the best to deliver digital learning content effectively during COVID-19. With little internet access, we have Moodle Box, which can help to provide quality access. Next slide. MHRD broadcast NPTEL engineering lectures for free. Therefore, lot of K-12 resources, example Khan Academy, e Parchala, Digital Library, etc., are available. MHRD and UGC together can develop a common timetable or a schedule for schools and MHRD can allocate or utilize existing channels to broadcast the content for free using a free OTA over the air setup box, which already exists or can be modified, costing around rupees 500 to rupees 700 only with recording and saving it into pen drive. Even modal box can be used to save broadcasting le lectures, that's it. And then you can play and enjoy the content either using mobile phones, Pi-based laptops or in TV. For example, Kerala government implemented Learn to Code where they used Raspberry Pi based desktops and saved in lakhs of rupees because there is no recurring cost for operating system license maintenance. Next slide, please. The, what are the features of Modelbox? This multilingual can support multiple languages. It can be powered using a power bank. It can work as a headless server and support up to 20 device connections via Wi-Fi. Platform helps teachers remotely to access content offline, online. It can be shared with students who can afford at least mobile phones. Next slide, please. Why low cost Pi based laptops are best for self learning? Because it helps in development of scientific temperament mindset, gives creative thinking ability by solving problems, by tinkering. For example, students love to build robots, programming, or even to attach an Arduino on their devices. Even simple Thank Google start oh, can be used mobile brands can also be used to provide facilities. So I, I really understand you have your television as well as your uh, box here. I mean, I'm, I'm, what is what is the solution you're actually proposing? Because television is already being done at many places. Right, sir, but, but sir, we don't see any K-12 lectures being uh, broadcasted online, just like NPDL lectures. But I think under the new NEP, I think government has already proposed four different channels based on K-12. Okay, okay. So I think we were not aware of that, but yeah. Definitely, uh, what we were proposing is using digital laptops, uh, which is missing the creative element of learning in tablets based like like by juice, which by which you can only remember and have content access. But actually, to learn and build the skins, pi based laptops are really efficient. And even due to COVID-19, uh, there is a challenge in digital learning and digital teaching because we don't have the learning environment. Right? Teachers felt it difficult to explain concepts using blackboards, classroom presentation, and Therefore, a device can be built, even let's say if teacher has to teach uh, mathematics or chemistry, a device can be built, for example, uh, which is low cost in comparison to Wacom based devices or Surface Pro, which we currently use in our industries or in, sorry, in our academic institutions, which can actually solve these problems of various teachers to teach effectively. So we can digitize our learning and digitize teaching. So what is your highest priority use of funds? Current variety of users, right? We are targeting uh, teachers and, and, and remote school students. But uh, we didn't include our digital device in the platform because we aren't aware what are the challenges, the solutions, the hackathon is looking for. So, so what's your highest priority use of funds with the, with the modest amount of initial capital? Where would you spend it? 
I would spend on building a device like uh, DigiPad, DigiPad using an app such that a teacher even have a mobile phone can even teach, let's say, mathematics using our device, which is very similar to Wacom based devices. And they can even if they have a laptop, then they, they can connect with our platform and teach in real time using their handwriting based our handwriting based DigiPad. And then uh, it can be shared uh, with the students using platforms existing like Zoom and Google Meet. Thank you so much. That's two minutes. Thank you, ma'am. So team 28, while the judges are finishing up their scores, please unmute yourselves. And team 33, you are up on deck. Judges, if at all you've missed a team number, let us know. We can definitely go back and let you know what number a team was. This was 19 for today. Uh, the team that just went? Yes. Fantastic. Are we ready to proceed? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, great. Team 28, please go ahead and I'll start the timer. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, next slide. Uh, our solution is called Apna Parshala. Bring school to home, give control to families and communities. Next slide. We did our primary research and found 84% of the affected students resides in rural areas and most of them faces basic reading comprehension issues. The three major problem areas identified are no access to learning aids, high pace of curriculum, and no digital infrastructure. Next slide. For a solution, we aim to provide home-based do-it-yourself activities to primary school children in rural India by including the existing resources and stakeholders via scaffolding during this time of pandemic. And our user group is two to five graders, and this is considered to be the early phase of child's cognitive development. Next slide. So we provide solution with a do-it-yourself activity-based curriculum. This approach works better than the traditional methods in internalizing the basic concepts, upcoming the performance pressure and fears. A child can immerse better in hands-on home-based activities. Content will be pre-recorded lessons or activity instructions sent through different mediums as interactive voice calls, etc., to child peers. We also provide a cloud storage of the content low file size, audio video file repository, easy to download over low bandwidth. Next slide. So here is a scenario where 39 year old Malti enrolls her daughter for Apna Parshala by giving a missed call on a toll free number. She receives a pre-recorded introduction with instructions for uh, receiving the lessons as per her daughter's grade. The right illustration shows how Malti is able to conduct an simple even odd number lesson with the help of DIY instructions received from Apna Parshala using household resources, like in this case, peas. In case of any query, she can always call back Apna Parshala for volunteer assistance. So concluding the presentation, the technology is uh, existing and easy to integrate. The content will be created or and curated continuously by taking care of the feedback. The USP of the solution is do it yourself methodology by utilizing the existing resources available, which can help develop the cognitive capacity of the child and complements the existing education system without burdening the system further. This will ultimately induce behavior change in the longer run in which the present education delivery model can change in rural India. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
yeah many places even have voice calls uh, access is very difficult how how are you planning to do this i mean in fact uh, even the network is very poor in many rural areas and who pays for it Ravindra, would you like yeah, to take this? Yeah, so hi. Uh, so uh, this is a voice call based uh, solution and the basic phone uh, penetration into the rural areas we found to be adequate. Uh, when it comes to the uh, 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 who pays for this, the infrastructure cost of this uh, solution will we don't see to be very high. Uh, and also it will be a staggered rollout in uh, uh, first few areas to create success stories and then roll out. So, We'll be pitching this to governments to kind of uh, uh, spread the word and also kind of um, be with us. Plus, it, uh, we think uh, taking inspiration from Wikipedia, we also think that it can also work for a, from a donation-based uh, model. How do you ensure that you uh, get uh, the beneficiaries to adopt it? Like, how do more and more families or mothers are able to, you know, learn through it and implement it at home? Uh, since we, yes, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, since we will be utilizing the existing resources like flower, plant, leaves, household items. So in terms of implementation, I don't think there will be issue in terms of resources. The only challenge is uh, uh, IVR where we need to have uh, an agency who can have a toll free number where they can call and get the feedback. Uh, to add to that, uh, pandemic can, uh, we can take uh, pandemic, uh, the kind of situation it uh, creates to kind of uh, further this cause. Uh, and also, um, uh, we our target group is also uh, uh, those people who are motivated to educate, but they are less on access. So we'll reach out to them uh, in various platforms to kind of uh, create a campaign around this. Thank you so much. That was two minutes. Thank you. So next up, team 33, as the judges are finishing their forms, please unmute yourselves and prepare to present. Team B21, you are on deck. Okay. Thank you, Kriti. We are ready. Perfect. Team. All right. Hello, everybody. Okay. So I have a question. If somebody calls you street smart, how do you feel like? Um, I usually consider it as a compliment. And so this is the problem that we're trying to solve here is the fitting of unenrolled unregistered children into the institutional education system that exists. If, if we consider street smartness as a compliment, why do we want them to fit in our system and not us to fit in their system? It might have some, some goodness in it. And that's where we are. And that's where the, our solution comes in from. Could we move to the next one, please? Um, okay, so this is just a picture from my balcony and because there's a construction going on, we have a locality of uh, uh, children who are living here in these slums. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, so right now there are 38 percent of the children who are unregistered at birth. That means there are so many children who at the age of 18, when they go for an Aadhaar card or a social security number, have absolutely no document to register for. Next slide, please. So the, the systemic solution that we have come, in, come, up, uh, come up about is for two people. One is the facilitator. Imagine the picture that I just, just showed you from my building. There are some people living in my building who occasionally go to that place and teach a few children there. So imagine if I am that person, I am a facilitator and the children who are living there are the, are the children that we'll cater to. 
So next slide, please. Um, so uh, so the, the two stakeholders of our solution are facilitator and the children. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Imagine there's an eight-year-old child and uh, yeah, next slide. Uh, so how does this work? A facilitator will sign up for an exercise, which will be a physical uh, play sort of an exercise. Just the example you saw the presentation before us, something of that sort. Uh, uh, then a kid will play on that exercise and the facilitator will make a profile for that kid so that he gets a digital profile on some platform somewhere and eventually a facilitator will earn points for doing this and will be able to give back to his own community. Next slide, please. Uh, imagine this is the first screen he comes up to uh, and today's exercise is counting a, a counting game, the basic math ability. So he checks, he clicks on that exercise and he gets to know some steps where he, where he can go back to the uh, community and play that game. Next slide. Uh, and whenever, whosoever wins, he can make a profile of the kid according to the perseverance, the empathy, the basic math skills, the basic street smartness skills that we talk about. And this child who never had any documentation now has a profile on internet. Thank Next you so slide, much. Please. That was three minutes. All right. Ivani, who are these facilitators? How will you implement this? All right. So, um, there was a time when I was working, I used to go to a slum area and teach a few people uh, because it was um, a requirement from my company. So maybe people who are A, who are willing to give back to the community or B, are in association with some forms uh, and who go and do, these, uh, do teach these children. Uh, so that is how probably they meet once a month and they can track these exercises and map these children out. Thank you. So Even why not one percent? Yeah. So why not get them registered in the first place? Like why not get them enrolled to government schools as well? Uh, so the problem here is uh, the struggle of getting into an institutional education system. Uh, so we are trying to recognize the the existing potential that they already have. They can they can actually become. Uh, uh, these small factories, they don't really need a lot of skill. They just need to be, they, to, for children to do repetitive work or for maybe students who come up uh, at the age of 18 who can just, you know, imagine a um, uh, garment industry. For the final uh, packaging, they just need somebody who can fold the garment well and has some basic behavioral sensibility. So if even if we know that this child is able to do this, we are able to hire them or give them employment just because of the basic skills because street smartness is a way uh, is enough to actually get a job and make a living it's just the so perspective i don't know what age group you are looking at but we don't want kids to be working we want kids to be educated so are you yeah, promoting yeah, I, more yeah yeah i mean i'm i'm, I'm I, I really i was not using the right term there thank you for pointing that out vivek uh, i was meaning children who registered at, at the age of 7 to 10 and then eventually at the age of 18 they have kind of the database and the perspective where they've built their street smartness into something which can be used for a whole of, lot of good goodness thank you so much that was 2 minutes thank you so much would you give us that team number one more time the street cred sure that was team number 33 thanks so much so next up team 21 please unmute yourselves and be prepared to present when the judges are ready team 43 you're up on deck Am I audible from uh, B21? Yes, you are. Judges, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Ready. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you go to the slide, please? Uh, so this is the uh, title of this work, uh, work that we have defined, a platform for high quality education in uh, rural area. Go to next slide, please. 
Next, okay. Okay, uh, I'm a professor in a government university in Odisha, in a semi-urban area. It's uh, based on my personal experience. Uh, we have the PG and UG students uh, who have their uh, smartphone with them, but every day we are not getting 100% attendance. Uh, and sometimes we are, the, as a teacher, also unable to take classes uh, every day in the scheduled time. It's because of the power failure and uh, uh, weather problems. Uh, and biggest problem is students are unable to access the library, uh, which is the main uh, source for them for getting good education. And uh, the situation is worse in the rural colleges. Go to next page. So the solution that we have uh, uh, the, the defined is uh, that uh, in the internet, uh, there is a, a large number of high quality lecture notes and video available. So uh, we need to uh, systematically make a database, uh, arranging them in program-wise, semester-wise, subject-wise, and lesson plan. And I tried this method for the advanced uh, uh, courses like leisure and botanics and uh, I give get a uh, uh, good uh, achievement also there and uh, but I did it with excel file because I am not from the software background but uh, it can be going to bigger dimension with software on the internet based solution like up development please next slide okay so therefore we propose this that uh, one educator can go for this uh, updating the uh, site please next slide and then the, all the links are uh, subject-wise and uh, program-wise. The next slide. And the student can uh, assess them in uh, app uh, by similar manner. Please next slide. And they can uh, get a choice. Let's say classical mechanics, uh, they have their uh, Newton's law and the circular motion. They have their choice from MIT, IIT, and uh, many more places. The teachers here will select the best uh, links and place they are against each of the uh, lesson plan uh, class-wide topics. Next. So it is uh, very simple and uh, immediately can be effective and uh, cost effective also. And uh, uh, lots of faculty can be uh, engaged in this uh, direction. Uh, okay, and uh, in case there is some gap, faculty can fill up this gap. Next, please. Okay, it has a uh, potential in marketing also. You know the scope of database. It's just a similar kind of element, but for research publications. But we are trying to do this. And another thing is that in Odisha, like state, the UG syllabus is same. And according to the new national education policy, it will be same for all over India. And uh, it, it is definitely very, uh, very difficult situation to make uniform quality education. But this will make a really good impact on that. And we can make a, a software and can go for uh, selling it uh, later on after beyond the pandemic. Say next. Thank you. Okay. So uh, uh, yeah, this is the timeline. And uh, uh, next is please. By December, we are planning to go for one post. Next, please. This is the group myself, uh, professor, and other software engineer from uh, uh, USA. We are the group. And he has already implemented these things uh, in this. So, so can we just ask you, uh, what, what are your use of funds? What would you do with, uh, with any prize money or, or other resources that are applied to this? Uh, uh, pardon, pardon, sir, again? Uh, so just want to understand your use of resources. Uh, if if you, you win prize money here or if other funds are directed to you, how would you use the funds and how much do you need? Yeah, uh, sir, sir, maybe I can, uh, I can answer this question. Uh, yeah. So first, first and foremost, like we would like to develop a system, uh, which is which would be a very simple one and uh, not the heavy heavy rated. So uh, as of now, what what's happening is um, in in mostly the rural setting and uh, the uh, the not not so called like you know the top universities where where the educators are. Uh, so th they are just providing the links and they are getting overwhelmed by getting the response from the students as well or uh, okay. they are providing all those links. Okay. So, may, I, uh, may I can add something also? Uh, in case we are winning the prize, then I would like to go for uh, buying some uh, good study materials or go for subscribing uh, the some uh, placement oriented like uh, a career endeavor type of uh, uh, course material for my student. They are trying because in the government university such facilities are not there. Earlier I was in a private university which is uh, the number one university of uh, uh, India but, and, uh, and fortunately I got to shift to government and I got a very good position there, but uh, I have to go for a really quality education system, not only in Odisha, 
uh, but in most of the rural area. That is my objective. So I'm, I'm sorry, you, you would be using the funds to create videos or, or materials? Yeah, uh, uh, we are also preparing, we are also preparing, but uh, there are already a lot of videos and materials are there. Uh, we are also studying them and uh, giving the link to the students. They are uh, enjoying and uh, they are uh, really liking the concept. Uh, so, there, so, uh, so the resources are already present there. So if you Yeah, a lot of resources are there. Are there. We need to uh, organize them in uh, semester-wise, uh, syllabus-wise and lesson plan-wise. So how can how is this different by just creating a playlist on uh, YouTube or just creating subfolders on? Uh... Yeah, this uh, this is also similar concept and uh, that can also be done. Uh, some of the things uh, from uh, if you go to uh, uh, School of Physics, uh, GM University, sometimes you can get some of them. But uh, uh, and uh, many times I tested in in Excel file also from my for my limited groups of students. And I. Thank you. That was two yeah. minutes. Okay, thank you, thank you all. So team 43, um, if you could unmute yourselves while the judges are finishing up their scores and team 13, you are on deck. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Fantastic. Please continue. Should I start? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We are Guru Sahai. Next. Let us look into the ground reality. We need immediate education support. We cannot just focus on providing tech devices to teachers in rural and semi-urban areas and assume it would solve the education crisis. Practically, it would take time for 3 million rural and semi-urban Indian teachers to cope up with it. These secondary school teachers are our core persona. Next. 90% of the population is digitally illiterate. Moreover, 70% of rural teachers are unaware of new technology. How can quality education to children be guaranteed with these conditions? Next. We are the core problems which teachers in rural and semi-urban India are struggling to provide quality education. First, they are facing emotional and mental fatigue due to lack of experience in such uh, social distancing education. Second, earlier education methods are not useful. Third, understanding tech is further complex with all the stress around. Next, we have designed Guru Sahai, a distance schooling skills program accessible to teachers in rural and semi-urban India through a peer-to-peer -peer hybrid ecosystem. Next, there will be educational experts who will impart their knowledge towards the main three issues teachers are struggling with. The most effective distance schooling methods, two, emotional skills, and three, digital skills. This will be through face-to-face -face visits. With these new set of skills, teachers will deliver a better quality education to our third stakeholders, our students. Next. The peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem is a proven successful functioning model similar to the ASHA health workers who visit villages to support and impart knowledge, knowledge to the peers wherever needed. Our ecosystem will rely on the usage of tablets as well in order to guarantee accessibility. Next. In comparison to other digital and physical solutions, our solution is relatively more robust as an ecosystem with quality guidance. Next. We hope to onboard and implement Guru Sahai pilot with support of funds from CSR and other organizations, along with experts from government. Next. We plan to onboard and coordinate on Guru Sahai phase one for two months, later implemented in a rural subdivision around Bangalore, later scale it up based on learnings to other rural areas during and beyond the pandemic. Next. We look forward to implementing this solution for teachers with partners such as Niti Aayog and Rockefeller Foundation, along with the support of government bodies such as the panchayats. Guru Sahai will be the brainchild uh, that channelizes these resources and maps them to democratic, uh, democratized education, contextual to the demographic needs. Next. Our team is a diverse. Uh, thank you for this uh, uh, opportunity. In these critical times, let us support our gurus. Next. 
Our team is a diverse multidisciplinary team with design management and technology experts. Thank you. So many of the Thank schools today are already doing this, right? I mean, so how is it different from the current model? And most many schools adopt this actually, except that they don't have an external person telling them, but they are actually having their own independent uh, schools out there in rural rural areas where they are actually educating the students there. So what what advantage does it really give you? Thank you, sir. So uh, what we notice here is these schools which are taking initiatives are rare and they have resources and they have that clarity. But in cases where the, uh, the schools which do not have these resources nor the logic or understanding of how to handle the situation, this uh, Guru Sahai will be the central body that can enable them with respect to their contextual demographic needs. So it is not an easy replicable model in this context because the cultural aspects and the uh, demographics are going to change and what resources are needed at which point in time is something as an expert team we would want to deliver along with the support of the other experts. Yes. Atvi, most of the schools in rural areas are, are, are public schools so you will have to work a lot with the government and uh, you know uh, the public public setup there have you guys thought about that because it's very hard to navigate you know yes sir uh, we got some uh, advice from the mentors uh, uh, that uh, with respect to uh, the public uh, sector that is where we wanted to go through the panchayat and the government setup uh, one by one and accordingly uh, inculcate the work through the hierarchy that exists rather than bringing a new setup. It's about using the effect, uh, resources available effectively. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. So team 13, please unmute yourselves and be prepared to present. Team five, you are up on deck. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Good, good afternoon and good night. Oh, sorry, team just one second. Judges, are we okay to proceed? Yeah, okay. Thanks. All right, please go ahead. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Team B13 will be presenting Play and Learn. Next slide. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken away age-appropriate socialization opportunities for rural, and youth, for rural youth in the form of schooling and community programs. This lack of socialization opportunities has implications on a rural child's long-term development due to tox toxic stress and the increased risk of being forced into child labor. We aim to provide rural children and families with the stability they need to prevent negative long-term impacts of this pandemic on a child's physical and socio-emotional well-being. Next slide. Our solution is to have community-led education and socialization forums. Play and Learn will have volunteers and existing teachers lead smaller groups. It will utilize existing community spaces and have a curriculum where children play games based on health, hygiene, safety, and socio-emotional well-being during a pandemic. Next slide. Our solution will focus on both the physical and mental needs of the children with a collective and responsive model. Next slide. First, we will connect with community organizations in rural areas to discuss our curriculum and their programming needs for the local population. Secondly, we will recruit teachers and volunteers. We will comply with government screening process, proceeds, procedures to ensure that instructors and volunteers are suited for work with youth. Then we will develop a curriculum of socio-emotional and physical health education that will support young people with the unique health and social challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Teachers and volunteers will be trained. Local healthcare providers and services will be integrated to support this model with COVID safety. We will implement play and learn. As we implement play and learn, we'll incorporate ways in which to collect feedback and adopt our program to incorporate that feedback. Additionally, our curriculum will be sold to for-profit organizations for profit revenue. Next slide. 
Play and Learn will focus on school-aged children ages 4 to 14 and will develop learning tools in the format of games. Also, an app will be available for, for tutor professional development. Next slide. Our team has a proposed funding plan. Next slide. And we believe our contacts of NGOs from rural and urban communities can collaborate with us to help in our mission, since many migrant workers in cities have families in rural communities. Next time, slide. Our team thanks you for your time. Have you floated this idea with some of the organizations you mentioned on the previous slide? Can answer that. We haven't floated the idea with them yet, um, but these are contacts of ours that um, we've worked with before. So we think that we would, they would be receptive to at least um, hearing us and giving uh, their feedback. Okay. Because some of them have similar initiatives. I'm involved with several of them and they have something similar, you know, may not be exactly. So you may want to check with them, you know, at least okay. see how you can add value to what they're already doing. Okay, thank you so much. I, I may ask you afterwards about the particular organizations. Sure. Thank you so much. What will you do first? Um, yeah, knowing that there's uh, only a modest amount of, uh, of resources that may be available right away. And if you could also go back to that slide that mentions your budget. If the team member is responding to this question, you're, you may be on mute. So, so um, in terms of the question regarding um, limited funding, I think at the beginning we were looking at just connecting with the different organizations so we would kind of see what their needs would be. Um, that would be kind of done on a voluntary basis from us. Additionally, we were looking at kind of recruiting volunteers so they wouldn't be compensated for um, in payment for their time. So that would also kind of alleviate that funding. Um, Part. And then I think too, like developing the curriculum, we would kind of start beginning that on within our team members. A few of us are educators and education researchers. So we were kind of would kind of begin That's to great. look at those. So as can well. you show us uh, some of your 500 proposed games? Do you have thoughts on, uh, on what the, the initial games curriculum would look like? So we would focus on games that focus, while we don't have prototypes of games yet, um, we would focus on lessons that talk about health, safety, um, and hygiene and socio-emotional well-being during this time. For example, um, designing your own masks. Um, thank you so sorry. much. Okay, thank, thank you. This was team 13, right? We just finished. Yes. Oh, sorry. That was, yes, team 13. Coming up is team five. Um, just before we start this, judges, we're halfway through the presentations. Is everyone okay? to keep going through the second half, or does anyone need a break? I'm okay. I'm good. I'm fine, yeah, thank you. Okay, perfect, and we will continue. Um, team five, whenever yes. you're ready, um, you can start. Um, team 60, you are up next. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Awesome, uh, should I start? Uh, hello? Really yeah, I got it, all of us, do it. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. All right. So greetings, everyone. I present to you LoNet, a digital platform that makes internet access self-sustainable for underprivileged students. Next. Recent surveys found that more than half of India's students lack access to smartphones or a stable internet connection. 
Offline alternatives like TV, recorded media, and printed paper fail to offer the crucial interactive element, while donation-based streams are not sustainable in the long run. Next. Children have bright minds, and with access to a connected phone, a little training, and family support, they could accomplish tasks which do not require expertise. Such tasks include filling out mental health surveys, annotating images for machine learning tasks, and so on. These tasks create value in the market. Next. Data is the new oil, and it powers a large number of crucial domains, including healthcare, AI, economics, and so on. And this really is just the tip of the iceberg. Next. Even though data is crucial, data collection is hard. Two of us in the team are researchers, and from personal experience, we know that the prevalent way of collecting data is nagging colleagues to fill out surveys. This leads to a biased sample, fatigue, and wastage of valuable time. Next. Our answer to these problems is loan ed. We loan out smartphones with 4G connections to children under a contract to help with data collection. Those above 16 are self-supervised while we engage with schools and foundations like Teach for India for younger children. Next. Researchers can submit tasks to our platform and get the data contributed by the children in exchange for a fee. Next. Here's how the system works. We maintain an encrypted database of students signed up with us and periodically, periodically check for possible misuse through facial recognition and geotagging. Next. Researchers submit tasks to our web portal, which is fed to our engine. Next. The engine does selection of well-suited students, translation into local languages, and gamification so that the children have fun answering questions and can learn something in the process. The engine is powered by domain knowledge, machine learning, and NLP. Next. The requirements travel through the database to intended students whose answers are collected and then anonymized using differential privacy and made available for download in secure cloud storage. Next. By talking about a pilot plan for 200 students, we estimated we would require $10,000 for devices and $600 per month in internet access. We estimate that each child would need to put in 25 hours of task time to cover the cost of a smartphone and only four hours per month to cover internet access. Next. Our business model involves requiring researchers to subscribe for a fee. Next. In order to maintain profitability, we propose a parallel revenue stream where onboard researchers provide career mentorship to children who are able to pay. Next. We have already established contacts in rural India, Nigeria, and Mexico through teammates and mentors. We shall follow up with contacts in relevant organizations on Monday. We plan to launch at least one pilot within a month and one year down the line, we hope that was three minutes. We become an established profit making venture. Next. Our next please. Our team consists of personnel from three countries and with expertise. Thank you. That was three minutes. And uh, other domains, we believe that we can make this happen. And uh, our website is also up in the next slide. That's all. Thank That's you. All. Thank you. So you started a problem statement of internet access not there in rural rural areas of Paraguay. So how are you resolving that? So there are a lot of places where internet access is there, but people just don't have enough phones. So I heard from people in uh, in a village in Madhya Pradesh from one of our mentors where that is the case. Uh, so I have also worked in disaster communication, and there are ways to get around that. So we can use something called delay tolerant networking. And also satellite uh, can come in handy. Uh, and with SpaceX doing this new thing, which is supposed to launch in a few years, that should uh, become possible. So a uh, quick question. So you're, is, this is a profit-making venture um, where you're asking kids to work and collect data so that they can earn their own phones. And at the same time, you're gaining a partial money or profit from it. Is that right? So the main idea is to really help uh, the kids there. So we just don't want this to be a charity case for the kids. So we want the money that they generate to help them. It's only to run, keep the business running that we have a parallel revenue stream in case the primary mode doesn't suffice. But essentially the children the surveys. Yeah. The kids taking the surveys is not just the only thing. If they can opt in for this. Um, we'll also be using data from the computer analytics and internet usage and um, the courses that the students are taking as well. So if the student doesn't want to take surveys, they don't, it's not a mandatory thing. Okay. What's an example of a survey that uh, the rural kids would complete that would be valuable to um, 
you know, to your corporate uh, sponsors? So for example, market surveys related to very simple stuff like uh, how much, what kind of soap would be best to launch next. Mental health surveys, like how are you feeling today? We don't have data about rural children regarding that, right? And just income uh, in rural households, number of family members, stuff like that. And also in machine learning tasks, you could just say this is a cat or a dog. It's a fun way for kids to learn, but it also serves the purpose. Thank you so much. That was two minutes. Thank you. Team 60, as the judges are finishing their forms, please unmute yourselves. Team 24, you are up on deck. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah. Start. Uh, give us one second. Let me just confirm with our judges that they're ready to proceed. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We are BitBots. Next. Let's imagine the scenario, Bipin, a 14-year-old boy from Bankura, West Bengal, a place which is 40 kilometers away from the nearest Sedalata. He needs to attend his online classes in the morning, but there's no network coverage. What is he supposed to do? But wait, he's not the only one who's facing these issues. There are thousands more. Next. What exactly are we seeing here? The lack of internet connectivity in the rural areas is widening the existing gap which rural students are facing due to lack of infrastructure and educational sector. The rural and the urban sector has to develop together and the two sectors have to complement one another. So education of the rural population is a priority project. Next. Only 24% of the whole rural population in the country has access to the internet. Next. Presenting spark plug. Igniting intellect. Next. We are focusing on the 13 to 15 and 16 to 18 age group students but the latter definitely deserves more attention. Next. We are phys physically shipping hard disk or SD card with preloaded courseware from a centralized server to every village, which low helps to load eBooks assignments with caching technology. Next. Bringing internet connectivity through BSNL air fiber program with radio frequency, a basic plan of 3 GB per day for just $7, which is affordable for 74% of the rural population. We are going to provide individual node MCU to students, which acts as a personal wireless extenders and creates a LAN that's a local area network or an intranet within students of the same locality. We are also using pandemic as a golden opportunity to introduce students in the latest trends in technology like IoT, etc. Next, live video classes twice a week with uh, uh, teachers have doubt clearing sessions with the implementing of caching technology through a centralized service for seamless standards uh, definition video call experience. With the help of our device partners, we are providing devices to rural kids through which they enroll to Spark program, through which they eventually they get educational courseware and actively track their progress with the teachers. This helps to create more demand, which eventually helps our users on board, through which we are, you are eventually going to help device partners to acquire more new customers in tier three plus cities. We are initially going to price this program at 8,000 per academic year. Next. Initially in phase one, we will be aiming at the two states of West Bengal and Karnataka. These two states have one of the highest youth populations in the entire country and have pretty bad network coverage. Phase two will deal with implementation throughout the country and ensuring our tech reaches to almost all rural students in India. For phase three, we plan to implement our aerial network extender solutions throughout the country and aim at setting up base stations with the computer labs for rural students. Our base stations or computer labs will be completely 3D printed to reduce costs and the time taken to build them. Next. This is our awesome team and we would especially like to thank our mentor, Mr. Akil Jai Prakash from Amazon for giving us all his invaluable inputs. Thank you. Are you creating your content or are you leveraging existing content? Uh, initially, we are planning to uh, leveraging the existing content from open source vendors like uh, Khan Academy and government resources. But eventually, once we get a confident and pretty good user base, we are uh, planning to roll out our own educational content. What are the costs for this? Like um, you said, one device can be shared by multiple people and how, what are the economics of it? Uh, actually, uh, right now we are planning this at 8,000 rupees per academic year per, per student. 
So one device will be shared if suppose there's a group of people of same class using uh, like uh, following the social uh, distancing norms right now, one student can share the single device with three, four people where the project is inaccessible or else we plan to give individual students with individual devices. So this is still a lot of money for people in poor areas, rural areas, right? I mean, do you plan to partner with uh, NGOs yeah. and all that who can help? Right them, now, uh, right now we are plan uh, uh, companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft are having uh, programs in India right now to provide devices for rural kids and underprivileged kids. So we plan to partner with them and provide devices. Perfect, thank you. Uh, could you mention the team name again? Sorry, I missed that. Sure, it was team number 60. Six zero. Someone correct me if that's wrong. Yep, I think that's what it was, 60. Yes, six zero. Thank you. Team 24, please unmute yourselves. And team 35, you're up on deck. As soon as the judges are ready, team 24, you can present. Can you hear us? Yes, we can. If you could be a little louder, it would be better. Okay. Yes, better. Should we start? Should we start? Um, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, thanks for giving us a platform to present our idea. Engage is what we are calling uh, our idea. Go to the next slide. Uh, next. Yeah, so uh, literacy rate in India has moved from around 12% in 1947 to around 74% in 2018. Uh, while we have bridged the divide between rural and urban India, it's still there's still a delta of around 16% uh, which remained in 2011. And due to the COVID situation, it's supposed to go uh, a little bit bigger. Just go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, so education has been mostly classroom based. Uh, it comprises of uh, teaching and then engaging with students and then evaluation. Next one. Yeah, so to keep students engaged and check if the students are learning basically, so teachers can ask questions and then students can answer. And next slide. And then of course, uh, next slide. Of course, COVID happened and then everything broke down, right? Uh, next one. And then, yeah, now humans are smart, so we moved to smart devices. Uh, although the feedback loop which existed from students to the teacher, that got uh, a bit scaled down. Next one. And of course, the uh, smart devices have their own uh, plethora of shortcomings, which are soon identified. Uh, some of them are listed here. Uh, uh, and most of them are uh, unfortunately severely biased against uh, rural students. Next one. Right, which left uh, TV as a very low cost solution, which is uh, which also has a very wide acceptability. Around 70% households in India have TV and people are also more willing to uh, share TV for education rather than their smart devices. And it's been implemented by state and uh, central government alike. Yes, next slide. Yeah, uh, the only problem with the uh, TV remains is that there is no way to, to understand for the teachers whether the students are keeping engaged and how do you evaluate them over time, right? And that is where engage comes in. Uh, just go to the next slide, please. Right. So we are proposing a mechanism in which teachers can ask uh, multiple choice questions on TV. Next one. And then students can reply uh, to a toll free number with the answer of their choice. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. So these are the benefits that we perceive uh, uh, for uh, for our product. Uh, essentially, you have a very effective and scalable solution. Uh, there is no learning curve involved because there are already uh, uh, SMS based uh, information that uh, that uh, SMS based uh, intakes which government is doing, let's say in case of uh, Chandan Yojana uh, and uh, Beam uh, accounts, right? Uh, so it's very quick to implement also because the technology already exists. There are a lot of uh, uh, television programs which are already doing that. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, potential benefits, uh, uh, if I talk about, so it engages students via gamification uh, and the the ben uh, and then there is real-time evaluation uh, of the answers that the students are giving, and then you can send personalized recommendations to the students uh, regarding wherever they are not they are not uh, performing well. 
and then the incredible uh, dearth of data that will get generated uh, with this particular framework at a very low cost can be utilized in making uh, several critical policy decisions by both public and uh, private uh, players alike thank you so much that was 3 minutes okay so yeah we have uh, these implementation plan and we have also tested out a prototype and this is the thank you how will you implement this if i'm a student sitting at home and learning on tv if i just respond through a 800 number or whatever you know toll free number right i mean how do i know my answer was right my answer was wrong you like so essentially it kind of works like kbc if you've seen uh, so the question will be flashed on screen then you answer within a minute and then you you also see the answer on the screen which was the correct one or not so it's not that you will get whether your answer was correct it you will still find out whether the answer that you have given is correct or not but how do you explain the logic let's just say my answer was wrong how do i know what was wrong in that answer um okay uh, so basically i think uh, it will go something like this in which uh, the teacher will explain why the question why the particular ans- answer was correct and not the other way around uh, I, i mean i think vivek i haven't given a thought to it thank you okay okay no that's yeah. fine how will you uh, distribute this uh, and get the word out Uh, so mostly we are thinking of piloting with uh, one small district first of all and then uh, later on uh, uh, scale it up uh, in terms of uh, promotion i think uh, telev- people who are already using television for uh, education they will already uh, they will easily be uh, made aware of this via advertisements uh, happy to answer any age group in mind Uh, so mostly we are targeting people who are the students who are studying in class 1 to class 8 so uh, elementary school uh, and what what kind kind of money do you need to make this happen and how will you obtain it uh, we haven't done that analysis yet uh, but we are expecting there is a lot of investment that will be required Okay. Any other questions? Actually, thank you so much. That was two minutes. Thank you. So, Team thirty-five, please unmute yourselves and be prepared to present. Team three, you're on deck. Hi. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Just give us one second. Let's just sure. make sure the judges are ready. Sure. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm too. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Hi everyone. This is Team Educast and we would not like to leave any student behind and want to do it through community-based data-driven rural and remote education practices. Next slide, please. The problem we would like to pitch is that we today see our rural and semi rural regions in india having a very different educational requirement and they lack in technology and a variance in different region in terms of language resources capacity and many more next slide please a proposed solution looks to improve on current and existing systems which is taking education content and broadcasting it through tv and radio educast will focus on closing this loop through a community feedback system and a data analytics framework the community based feedback system includes the using of asha workers and teacher volunteer coupled with low technology communication channels like whatsapp and ussd the data analytics system processes feedback like natural language processes like nlp and nlu coupled with predictive modeling to cluster regions to cluster regions according to specific needs so resource provisions can be allocated next slide please so how are we going to do this firstly we will start by adding more data sets and parameters to enable ecosystem mapping need analysis and cluster development once regions are identified we will engage with stakeholders and develop relationship with the community in order to co-create a feedback system 
and broadcast content. We will then test, pilot, iterate, and hopefully prove a model. Next slide, please. Educast will be structured as NGO, so we can enable CSI funding opportunities. We will grow this into a sustainable NGO by creating revenue streams through market research insights as our database develops. Our key partners would include the education industry, local governments and NGOs, volunteers, media, and ICT industries. Our model is based on a collaborative approach. We hope that potential partners in the audience see a collaborative opportunity and connect with us post this event. Next slide, please. And lastly, I present to you the team Educast. Thank you very much. We will now take questions. So who, who is going to do the content? I didn't get it here, right? So you are using okay. Do the uh, yes. uh, yeah. Okay, so to answer that question, if we can go back to the slide that shows the solution overview. So already we have existing content providers that are already um, broadcasting their programs at the moment. So they already have content. Our aim is not to get involved in creating content or broadcasting. Our focus area is looking at how we can actually improve on the feedback system through our community-based um, solution and using data analytics to better inform these education content providers to adapt their content number one and to better inform the broadcast and media houses on where they should be broadcasting relevant uh, content in a, at a certain point in time. So where does this analytics happen? Um, so the analytics happen on is on our side. So it happens and we collect data through um, what you see at uh, number five. Uh, it gets stored into a database or cloud. And as we get more data sets and more parameters, we start running more analytics. And with that, we push out a dashboard okay. and yeah, report. That's right. That's right. That's Are you going to sell this data or are you just going to provide free to these people? Uh, how will, uh, what is the commercial model there? Okay, so to start off with, we're going to start off as, a, well, to be donor funded, just so that we can kind of invest in this USSD system to improve our feedback system and then to invest in our data analytics. Uh, we want this to be freely available at the moment because as a data-driven project, um, we want to keep it open so that we can prove the solution. However, with the data being used, it can be restructured to be marketed to marketing industries that are interested in it. Thank you so much. That was two minutes. Team three, as the judges are finishing their scores, please unmute yourselves. Team seven, you are on deck. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Just give us one minute. Sure. Now let's go. Okay. All right, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the title of our project is SELF, acronym for Smart Education and Learning Fairly. Uh, next slide, please. So the problem statement that we're trying to work on is uh, this pandemic has put 320 million students out of the schools. Government is trying to push e-learning as much as possible. The market for e-learning is fragmented currently with uh, the, the two problems that uh, villages are facing per se. The first challenge being that there's limited accessibility to technology as well as internet or I may say resources. The second is access to uh, the quality based content that they would need to basically emphasize on self-learning. So these are the two challenges that we're trying to solve. Next slide, please. 
this is basically a promising figure from gram panchayats uh, across the country. We see Uttar Pradesh and Maharashtra having certain stability in terms of connection, 28% and 58% respectively, which gives us a place to start a pilot with. Next slide, please. So basically, what's the solution in the value proposition that we're trying to push? So we're trying to bifurcate the problem within two uh, broad scenarios. The first is villages which have stable internet connection and have accessibility to resources. What we would try to do here is uh, basically have a tech-based uh, solution, a web app, which would provide a two-way interaction for feedback between teachers and students, provide con e-learning e content, as well as give an opportunity to teachers to create their own content and push it to students as much as possible uh, who are re registered in the local schools. The second part is the offline part where, uh, where the villages which do not have a stable internet connection, we will try to set up uh, uh, classroom based monitor solutions with uh, content in pen drives and hard disks being sent to the schools where teachers could basically play that directly. An important part would be to also uh, uh, accommodate effective query resolution, which is basically dissemination of information through calling so students can directly call teachers to get support. Next slide, please. Uh, so basically, who are the stakeholders? There are three stakeholders in this whole equation. First is self, we are providing the web based, app based solution. The second is NGOs and government bodies. So we would need government, the state governments to support us with financing and NGOs to operationally deliver devices which have uh, content already in them. The third would be teachers who would help us in developing content, but initially we would use the content which is already there. Next slide, please. So this is the first visualization where we have, which the team has made in the last two days. This already has uh, uh, a, a prototype for the landing page as well as uh, resolution of queries and student teacher interaction. Next slide, please. The second is in case of remote access, uh, the assignments and study materials can directly be accessed from, uh, from their home. So this is the second solution that we have. Uh, next slide, please. The business model, of course, is a private uh, public partnership, uh, financing coming from the state governments, uh, uh, the operations taken care of by NGOs and we providing the setup. One important thing is that students uh, in villages currently spend around 200 rupees per month. So we do not want to charge anything from the students. We want it to be purely financed by the state governments per se, because we understand it, it's very difficult to uh, charge them money when they're only spending 200 rupees on education per month. Next. Thank next you slide. so much. That was three minutes. Rishabh, if you're leveraging the NGOs with their tools, right, with their devices and mm -hmm. an existing content, why can an existing NGO not do what you're trying to do? Uh, right. Uh, so, so as we see, there are two perspectives to this. One is NGOs would need uh, enablement of this tool through a web app or basically an app-based solution, which could facilitate this. Uh, so that's the value that we add to the uh, to the situation. An NGO can provide uh, devices, uh, but what we're trying to do, that's in case of a remote setup. But let's say if it's an online setup, it's a real-time two-way interaction that would be facilitated by an app-based solution that we're providing. Okay. So you mentioned in the app uh, that there'll be two-way communication. Can you talk more on that? So we're trying to set up a chatbot kind of a feature where basically students can directly interact with teachers because students are currently at their home. So they would basically directly interact with teachers within the app. This is the case where uh, the internet stability is strong. The other part is where uh, in case of remote access, we would leverage the existing phone networks to do that. Have you talked to any existing NGOs about their adaptability, willingness to adapt to uh, your solution? Uh, so right now, uh, we, we have talked with a couple of NGOs in Begu Sarai, where one of our uh, teammates is based out of. So, so uh, that's something we, uh, we, like, this is the first set of pitch that we had in the last two days. And I think in terms of operational, it's viable. Uh, that's the first uh, set of uh, feedback that we have. Also, oh, this solution has been pitched in uh, another... Uh, another competition where it won, it won the round for the best technology innovator. Great, thank you. Hello, uh, am I audible? 
Yes, you are. Team seven, just give us a moment so the judges can fill out their scores. Team sure. 26, you're on deck. Last team was what team number? It was zero, zero, 003. Zero, zero, three. Number three. I'm ready to go. Um, yes, uh, uh, you can start. Uh, we can start. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. A warm day to one and all. Myself, Avias Archivardhan, studying computer science and engineering at IIIT Kutraim. I work with the team uh, on the team delivering access to quality education in rural and semi-urban areas in times of pandemic. Next slide, please. I and my team figure out that students currently pursuing their bachelor studies living in rural areas and semi-urban areas across the country face bandwidth issues and they don't have proper means of resources to gain knowledge. Due to this COVID-19 pandemic, all classes are conducting in online through different video conferencing platforms. We kept our notebooks, our own materials in the hostels as we don't have time to get them and didn't expect this pandemic will be there for six months. Our internet data packs gets exhausted with these online classes and now we searching and preparing for resources again for examinations is a nightmare. Next slide, please. We thought let our student community make something useful to our own community. That's why Team Self Learning came up with a beautiful solution for bachelor students for self-study. I request participants, you can scan the QR code affixed on your screens right now to check our prototype. Next slide, please. We through self-learning uh, for all platform looks for every resource uh, for some of the topics which we study in the bachelor's course. These platform has videos, articles that provide students to understand most of the concepts involved from basic level to advanced level. We try to keep understand learning trap up. Our platform will have a dedicated team of volunteers to answer the student queries raised in this platform. The main advantage here is students won't need to search for the articles resources by their own. We do the same work and we will provide to them. Let's move to the prototype. Next slide. Yeah, here on your screen, you are seeing our self-learning platform homepage. One thing to remind here is self-learning for all platforms do not plagiarize the contents already published. We just make search and best use the best resource available right now and in our platform so that readers can just go to their official site and can learn it. Next slide. This will be a uh, this slide contains the mock student topics currently available. Uh, students can select a topic just to know his, uh, and he can register. Uh, we need to know uh, which type he is expecting, like he is in beginner level or intermediate level or advanced level. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, students can click on any article to read the concepts, videos to watch, uh, tutorials, as well as if you need more help, he can click on the more help button to get access, to get touch in with the volunteer. Next slide, please. Coming to the market dynamics, when we take the similar type of platforms available in market, we are providing the service purely for students for absolutely free of cost. Our team of volunteers will be accessible at any time because uh, once if student asks for doubt, we will be triggering mail alerts for each. Next slide. We plan to extend our projects to uh, creating a mobile version of this project, getting a good team of volunteers to work with us deliberately, creating a resourceful network in student communities. We plan to extend this application to master's PG students. We are definitely, inter definitely interested in taking this application to next level with the help of resourceful and knowledge persons in this field. Next slide. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to MIT team and I wish upcoming participants best of luck. I thank my mentor Raksha Tamaya for giving good guidance in this entire hackathon process. Thank you. Who will be creating the content here? Will it be... Um, like, where will it be students will be creating. Yes, ma'am. Students will be creating. Our motto is for students, by students. Students will be creating the content because students know how exact his peer student can understand better. Okay. When we and take last minute preparation, students help to other students uh, very effectively. Uh, from the, uh, that's our motivation to take this up. And it is free for everyone, eh? So the funding yes, is all through NGOs. Hmm. Yes, sir. It is free for everyone. Even a mechanical student can learn Python. Civil engineering, uh, CSE student can learn civil engineering. It's his wish. Uh, we are not uh, just uh, keeping this a track like CSE students can only learn this. Other students can only learn this. We are not dealing with that. He can learn anything he wants from this platform. We are just using the resources, just indexing them properly. Who will be controlling the quality? 
of the prod of the content the volunteer network i discussed right there will be a group uh, different divisions of the volunteers our volunteers will be controlling the network of the co uh, content provided in these articles and even we take the user feedbacks also to improve that have we tested it have we implemented is there a user feedback from anyone currently we just build a prototype sir uh, uh, mm. when we talk with uh, some uh, industry level experts they are actually shown some interest on this project sir so based on their inputs i thought to present this idea in this hackathon so your motivation was oh. because you have your notes and in in your hostel right but you initially also started by saying that your data gets expired so how does that problem get solved here we are not plagiarizing the data ma'am we are just showing a reference to them to learn there even we prepare notes for searching in online resources right we are helping rural students because they have less data packages available in internet to attend online classes so this uh, when we just guide them in a proper way we can keep their learning track at a top thank you so much thank you thank you so much and i wish upcoming participants all the best Team B twenty six, please unmute yourselves. Team fifteen, you're up on deck. I already unmuted. Uh, when is going to be the next slide? I will just say next. Sounds good. Sure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I think we are just about set for you to start. Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Yep. Good evening, everybody. This is team Edumintra, and this is Hira. Before the lockdown, she went to school and had good grades, but then COVID-19 came and the school became online. Her parents are too poor to buy an iPhone or a tablet, so she doesn't study anymore. Next. Our main pitch is to help students like Hira living in the slums of Maharashtra. The literacy rate in these slums is about 80% and not having access to the internet withdraws the ability of more than 1.45 million students to attend classes. Next. Here comes Edomitra. Next. Before COVID-19, teachers could talk to their students and guide them at schools. Now this valuable connection is lost. Edumintra will help the teachers in reaching their students. This app has remote monitoring without the need for internet and content downloaded once per semester. Next. So how does it work? We have a software skin that logs out the student from other functionalities of the tablet and uses voice calls and messages for daily updates. They can see their performance right on the screen. Next. They can have help of their mentors all the time, next, and give them a call to, next. So coming down to the stakeholders, we have jotted down a few NGOs in India who have the kind of mentor network in the area that we're targeting, and they will be providing us with the funds for the initiative. And then with the help of our partners, we will make the ta um, tablets available to the teachers for content creation, keeping in line with whatever curriculum they follow. Next. Now, moving forward, why we're unique? We are nonprofit, specific to the age group, uh, eight to 13 years. And so we will tend to have a greater impact. The content in the system is uploaded by the teachers as they know the students the best. Our app is offline and we have content partnerships with other apps too. Next. These are some pictures of the tablet being used. Look how happy they are after they got it. Next, we plan to have five tablets from the factory to do the software and add the skin on them. In one week, we will be ready with the step. By the second week, we will be able to negotiate the funds. And by the third week, we will be ready to start the mass producing them. So by the end of the month, the teachers will be getting the tablets just one month and the students are back on track with their education. Next. This is our team. Please have a look and thank you very much our mentors. Next. So are you ready to make children's future brighter with us? Thank you. 
Polina, this is already implemented. You've already started implementing this? Um, actually, we just did it in the morning. Today in the morning, because like we did like a thing we might try out. So in the morning, we started trying it out. Well, you have it ready. I mean, you showed some photograph which had the yeah. pads uh, distributed. So I was wondering whether it's already... Yeah, so yeah, what we have is actually just a wireframe. And uh, what we did was we just uh, showed them the whole uh, uh, interface and how everything else works. They could just click on the call thingy and it called a person. We just showed them how everything works. Uh, it's, we don't have the back end ready yet. It's just the front end part. Yeah. And how much would it cost? Um, one, one tablet costs 7,000 uh, rupees. Uh, and then everything else we can do it in house, so we don't really have to pay money for that. So it's just the tablet, and the funding mm -hmm. will come from NGOs because uh, we are giving the tablets for free. We are not really selling them because what these children need it's education, and they need these tablets to study. So we just want to do something good. We are not profit organization. So are you ready to make the children's future brighter with us? <laughs> right, that's the last slide. Great, thank right. you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, thank you everyone, good. thank you. Thank you. So team 15, please unmute yourselves and just give us a minute so the judges can finish their forms. Team 51, you're up next. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are. Thanks. Thank you. I think we're just waiting for one more form submission and then we can continue. All right, please go ahead. Hello everyone. We are Team Revived. Next. Today, only 24% of young Indians have access to computers with an internet connection and more than 66% of our population lives in rural areas. Revived will cater to three to 10 year olds in rural and semi-urban India. Next. We want to do this to make high quality education accessible to this age group and develop reasoning, logic, and language skills for a strong foundation. Moreover, our country does not have an adequate educational database. Next. The database will track assessment, progress, and cognitive development of the children along with the collaborative effort of NGOs, government schools, and agencies in a local area who will help maintain and supervise the data. Next. This is the UI dashboard with a backend database interface to the volunteers. Every volunteer will have a login and they can access the students assigned. In addition, every student will have a profile along with the monitoring of important skills such as reasoning and intelligence, language, memory, and information development, which we will be assessed by volunteers through standardized tests, games, and metrics. Next. Our database serves as a platform for volunteers to sign up and monitor the student's assessment. Without being over dependent on the internet, the database can be maintained via a telephone hotline monitored by volunteers and regional supervisors. Furthermore, the volunteers can interact with students through calls and have face-to-face -face interactions once a week to ensure the highest quality of assessment data. Also, it will help influence educational researchers, policy makers, and prominent stakeholders to take interest and potentially invest in this project. Next. So, 
So these are our main competitors. The National Center for Education Statistics shows high quality data, but only serves the, only serves the United States and is very hard to access. And the only database that's currently in India is the All India Education Survey, hosted by the NCERT, which only shows grade seven to eight data with, with, with worse quality and is really hard to access. Our data would focus on elementary schools. It would be easy to access and would serve the entire target, target population. Next. Uh, for, our, for our business model, the money would mostly come from grants and researchers would, would, would pay a fee to actually access our database. For our pilot program, we would like to partner with NGOs such as Rotary and Lions and start recruiting volunteers from campuses such as IIT. We will then start in two states as a pilot program and then scale to serve the entire country. Next, we will impact policy decisions, research, and future education in, the, in, in, in India, along with being the first ever database to showcase elementary school data. We will plan to partner with NGOs, schools, and the government. Next, this is our team and thanks for listening. How, what will you do with the data? Let's just say you collect the data, who will you give it to and how will you really <coughs> make sure it is used in the right way? Um, we're, we're, we're planning to distribute this to um, two government agencies free of cost to actually use the data and, and for educational research, researchers will pay a small fee to get access to our database. Have we talked to those government agencies? Do they even need data or they have plans to collect their own data? Uh, currently, the only database is the, is the NCRT data, which is used in policymaking um, throughout the country. But uh, currently, there is no other uh, database representative of the population. They don't have a good metric. It's just a pass fail of the students. And if this issue will not be attending classes, we'll really suffer after the post COVID. We want to address three to 10 years. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. So team 51, if you could unmute yourself. Yes, you unmute yourself. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah, okay. First slide, please. Just give us one second. Yeah, sure, sure. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, everyone who's not presenting, could you who's not presenting? May I have the first slide, please? The Dialbak system of management encompasses all the elements of society and it attempts to create a complete person through value-based education. Second slide, please. Next. The pitch is how to design. Please go back. Please go back. The pitch is how to design mobile, smart and resilient supply chains, networks or ecosystems to enable the access, equity, and affordability to high quality education to reach out the last, the least, lowest, and lost entity in the population in the rural and semi urban areas, especially during this pandemic when education is interrupted. Next slide, please. As you can see, the COVID has a very staggering impact on global education. Around 320 million learners stopped to attend school and colleges. Worst hit were children from unprivileged communities without or with minimum access to technology. Next slide, please. The best practices which are being followed in our institute, Galbag Education Institute during the pandemic were we adhered to the academic calendar, blended mode of education using smart mobile resilient network, flexibility for all learners, encouraging high order thinking skills, and virtual laboratories for practical classes, regular online assessment in semester, and most importantly, student support was given in the form of earn while you learn. Next slide, please. 
May I have the next slide? May I have the next slide, please? As a representative case study, we have chosen Raja Barari, which is a cluster of 10 tribal villages consisting of Adivasi population of 5,000, more than 5,000 people, and which is situated at a distance of 700 kilometers from the Albag Educational Institute. But we can show the influence of this, our institute on that. We have been providing education umbrella through an institutional radio line, and the institute has established an ICT which is connected to EDUSET. ICT has enabled DI to offer low cost quality education. Connectivity has enabled DI access to resources such as DI cloud, high performance computing, virtual classes and software installed at DI main campus. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The virtual classes were held at Bar Raja Barari village cluster and May I have the last next last slide, please? May I have the last slide? We conducted practical examinations through virtual labs during COVID-19, as can be evidenced from the newspaper cuttings, which are shown here. Next slide, please. DEI Stanford and DBT collaboration held the first international conference in the Rajabharati tribal villages of full scope and frugal innovation works. Next slide, please. So technology and networking as a comprehensive enabler of education helped us to conduct classes through e-learning, online teaching, virtual laboratories during the COVID time. And we could conduct all the classes during this period. Next time, next slide, please. Next slide. The future scope and scaling up is the Albag Educational Institute has 450 plus minus one ICT center, center spread across the entire India. The holistic approach proposed in as a case study for Rajavarari tribal village could be extended to the other ICT centers also to make this approach scalable to entire India. This will support the education to the last, the lowest, the least and the lost across entire India. Thank you so much. That was three minutes. Thank you so much, that's three minutes. Yeah, I'm done. Is this all in English or how are you doing this right now? Because the languages could be a barrier, right? If it's the tribal area. We, yeah, there are certain courses, they, we teach in Hindi also, but most of the classes are held in English depending upon the course. If it's a diploma close, most of the classes are held in Hindi also. And also so, looks like present, you already implemented uh, this, right? This has already been implemented. I mean, do you get feedback? Is there a mechanism to get feedback from the beneficiaries, from the students, as to how are they liking it? Are they, you know, how do you grade them? How do you really see if they are benefiting with this, um, you know, with this process? We've been doing this. Absolutely. Uh, we get uh, continuous feedback, and not only uh, this is just a representative case study, but we are present in several other parts of the country and wherever we are present we follow a multilingual approach so a local language is always promoted and uh, it's not just the matter of getting the feedback we remain in continuous touch uh, with the rural and tribal population over there so our volunteers and representatives are present our alumnus are also present over there so uh, Together with our alumni network, as well as our uh, very strong base of volunteers, we remain to continue, uh, continue to remain in constant touch with them. So you have already so, so, yeah. so I must emphasize, uh, I must emphasize that this model is a global model. Uh, it's a global model. So we continue to expand in other parts of the world also. So, so what uh, what has been the evolution of the last forty eight hours? To to enhance this, this this is this could be chosen as a model, yes. and we could go for other rural areas wherever our ICT centers are there. 
we could impart education using this kind of a model so so we are following a uh, cluster based approach so wherever we are present we definitely uh, benefit our neighborhoods and we fan out from there uh, benefiting more and more neighborhoods so that is the vision to uh, serve the last the lost the least and the lowest uh, at last thank you so much that was 2 minutes thank you so much that was 2 minutes We we also have we also have our presence in all parts of the world as I mentioned Australasia Asia Europe US and elsewhere. Great, thank you so much. So team fifty four, we read. You are our last team up. Um, please unmute yourselves. If your team is currently in the Zoom and you did not present and you're wondering what is happening, please raise your hand so that I can figure that out right now. Raise your hand in the Zoom, not on your video. So fantastic, I think we're ready to proceed, Team 54. Yeah. Can you proceed to the slides? Welcome to next. Next slide, please. While digital education has now come to the center stage in India, the shift has left teachers in rural areas overwhelmed. They are under-equipped in terms of digital illiter literacy. They are still using outdated teaching methods and suffer from inadequate teaching materials. Going to school isn't just about learning lessons, but it is about building relationships with teachers and peers. Students now lack that connect and the motivation to learn. They are facing immense social and emotional learning loss, which further leads to academic loss. Next slide. Meet Padmaja, a primary school teacher who represents all those rural teachers facing this problem. She's new to online teaching. She's concerned about students. She wants to create visually engaging content for students because she has observed that children take great delight in watching those. But oops. She struggles using the existing tools. Next slide. Next slide, please. This is a study that shows the effectiveness of animations in learning. Previous slide. I think there is a lag. Yeah. This is a study that shows the effectiveness of animations in learning that can lead to better performance of students. Next. Our solution, an easy to use tool for teachers that automatically converts entered text to animations without the need of any expertise. Padmaja is now happy that she can create content with almost little or no effort, ignite children's interest and make learning fun, leave a deep rooted impact on the children. Next slide. This is the prototype of our tool. It involves just two steps. Type your sentence and click on the button and you get your animation. Next slide, please. This tool can also be leveraged for explaining complex scientific and mathematical concepts in an easy manner to spread social message to promote social growth. And the most favorite of all, it can be used for storytelling. This not only strengthens relationship between student and teachers, it helps student build a personal connection and hence it will keep them hooked up to the virtual class. This is a platform born in COVID, but it's gonna bear the fruit in future education post COVID too. Next slide. So coming to the business model, hosting partnership with educational institutions is one of the revenue stream. Also <coughs> government has already built digital learning platforms like Deeksha, so we can collaborate with government to generate content. Collaboration with educational services like Khan Academy can be a source too. 
next slide next slide please so our future plans include subscription Thank based more so that was 3 minutes uh more polished final animations and on demand library generation next slide please as a plan of our future roadmap we plan to onboard panel of educators and advisors we believe our tool will help mitigate the challenges that comes with the remote education and reshape the education scenario in rural settings thank you we can take up questions now so have you already developed this tool is it already done conversion uh, actually we have authored a research paper on this which is published and uh, we plan to develop it it's not developed but we have a research paper on it so it's not exactly tailored for rural purpose as of now so it is more of a proof of concept and we have tailored it through the 48 hours any other questions what's the uh, what's the the com uh, the most complex part of your business plan so uh, so uh, as we speak uh, spoke on the the most complex part would be uh, getting uh, getting in a loop with the faculty so that we we are planning like uh, the revenue which we are generating we are planning to invest again to uh, pay teachers to develop more better con content in the library so we are planning to create that feedback loop between teachers and our platform so that is something which we need to build on and also bringing in educators and advisors is also uh, requires little expertise we need little expertise on that side too yeah and what are the costs associated with this and who is supposed to pay for it the school the student mm, so as we uh, um, mentioned before for a uh, rural purpose we'll be mainly uh, not uh, making them pay for any subscription service but other than that when we are collaborating with khan academy or when we are collaborating with government to improve their content then we can uh, have a revenue from them to make this app running and we are planning for a subscription based model too so if we are collaborating with uh, something like byjuice who already are developing content so we are when we are collaborating with byjuice or some other uh, making partnership having partnership with educational institutions then we can have a subscription based revenue stream from them too thank you so much that was 2 minutes this was the last one kritika yes this was the last presentation i sure you if we could just go to the next um slide we'll just wrap this out so thank you so much to everyone who pitched today and to everyone for their hard work Um I think I speak for all the judges when I say that what you've accomplished in 48 hours is actually really remarkable. Um and we encourage all of you to continue working with one another, stay in touch and use this network as a group of people who are just really passionate about a similar space and work towards some of the ideas that you've come up with this weekend. Next slide. So please keep your eye out on the general channel to um listen for the announce or look for the announcement about the award ceremony it's slated to start at 12 p.m. EST or 9:30 p.m. IST um the judges and track leads are now going to go to a separate zoom meeting to discuss all the amazing pitches that we saw today um but hopefully some of them will also be able to join us for that award ceremony thank you so much all of our participants feel free to continue uh, messaging us on slack and we'll see you at the award ceremony thank you all right, the best thank you leave, could we have a group picture of track b yeah if, if everyone can just turn on their cameras camera for like 2 minutes <laughs>
and we'll take a set of screenshots here. So we have to do multiple screenshots. Think looking at how we have three gallery views. I think I see five gallery views. Well done, everyone. Good job, Track B. Thank you. Good job. Yep. All the best, everyone. Um, has everyone turned on their cameras? Thank you to the team leads and to the judges for your time and patience. Okay, so I can see I can see a couple more faces popping up. I think I'll just give you guys just one more second. Um, okay. Okay. What's up? Come on, show us your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just an audience here. So, <laughs> not, not sure whether I should have been up, but I'm here. <laughs> okay. So, guys, ready? Three, two, one, smile. Okay. Maintain it because the gallery is reshuffling. <laughs> Oh, wait, sorry. Can someone else do this? I just realized that I can't save these screenshots. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. My goodness. <laughs> thing is open when I need to. I think after 48 hours, Kriti and I can officially no longer even take screenshots. Yeah, so sorry about it. that. As everyone can see, I've been sitting in the same spot in my bed <laughs> since 2.30 this morning. And I have I'm no impressed there's so many people here. Uh, you guys aren't, uh, aren't catching up on sleep. Yeah, I can, uh, I can see it's all done. Thank you, well done. Yeah, if, if anyone can just take screenshots for us and then post it on the channel, that would also be great. Yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. Thank uh, you. I'll do that so that we have some kind of backup. Yeah. Everyone just smile for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking for a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. Done. It's done. Thank you. Thank Should we do it here? I'm done. <laughs> Judges, I am slacking yeah. the Zoom meeting okay. our deliberation room right now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Have a Bye nice guys, day. thank you so much. Bye guys. Well done, See you. good job. For some reason over the weekend, my print screen button got pushed in and I'm just like <laughs> struggling. <laughs> Hey, are we retaining this channel or are we switching? No, I'm just one? posting a new link in the judges um, Slack okay. channel. It's at okay, judges. I'll, okay, I'll see you there. <laughs>